Thank you. Uh, 15 years ago, on the 100th anniversary of Frank Lloyd Wright's first visit to Japan, Koichi Mori and I made a documentary about his work and lasting legacy here. We dared to suggest that he did not only take inspiration from Japan, but also gave back. Let me share some of our proof with you. Wright was born in the same year that the Tokugawa shogunate fell, ending almost three centuries of Japanese isolation. By the time he arrived on his first visit in 1905, the feudal era cities had already been transformed by European style architecture, but Wright loved the country's aesthetic charms and he began working endlessly on designs that might bring him back. Eventually, he spent 34 months here creating his masterpiece, the Imperial Hotel, and some 13 other designs, six of which were built. Wright was obsessed with making the Imperial seismically sound as well as fire resistant, and his innovative cantilever construction passed the test on the hotel's opening day when a massive earthquake leveled Tokyo. The Imperial stood strong and became Japan's number one tourist site. But sadly, it didn't survive the forces of commercial development. Despite a worldwide preservation campaign, the hotel was torn down in 1968. The good news, however, is you can visit the reconstructed front lobby and reflecting pool at Meijimura Architecture Park near Nagoya. The Imperial always insisted that its restaurants and five-star service made it famous, not Wright's building. But it's clear the 1970 hotel could do with a facelift. Rumor has it a new design is coming for the 100th anniversary of Wright's Imperial in 2023. In 1922, Wright built Jugakuen, the School of the Free Spirit, for Japan's first female journalist, Motoko Hani, who wanted her daughters to attend a progressive girls' school. Here's Wright with Madame Hani in the front and the first students. Like the Imperial, Jugakuen was also slated for demolition, but a 10-year global preservation battle prompted the Japanese government to change the laws about building reuse after historic designations, and it's now one of the most popular wedding and party venues in town. In 1924, Wright's right-hand man, Arata Endo, here in the white jacket, oversaw completion of a summer house for sake brewer Tazaimon Yamamura. With mud walls and tatami mats in some of the rooms, it was a unique fusion of East and West. Demonstrating Wright's genius for spatial composition, the house was built into the hillside, allowing breathtaking views. After the war, it was saved by the Yoroko Steel Company, and they've spent millions of dollars keeping it up to code for 20,000 visitors every year. Wright's impact on Japanese architecture in the 20s and 30s was immediate and widespread. Here are several buildings that evoke his early designs. But another great influence has been through the men who worked with him on the Imperial Hotel and went on to transform Japanese architecture. Arata Endo at the far right in these images was the first architect to share design credit with Wright, both for Jugakuen and Yamamura House. He went on to create hundreds of buildings, but his crowning achievement came in 1930 when he designed a new hotel near Kobe. Koshien Hotel pays tribute to Wright's lost Midway Gardens in Chicago with multi-tiered rooftops and light towers rising like beacons. It's been beautifully preserved and it's now the centerpiece of the architecture program at Mukogawa Women's University. Antonin and Noemi Raymond came with Wright to work on the Imperial in 1919, and they started their own thriving firm and stayed on for another 40 years. Like Wright, they emphasized Japan's singular relationship with nature in their work and designed all the fixtures and furnishings. But Raymond was dubbed a violent evolutionary for his experiments with 
building styles and materials. And he followed in Wright's footsteps by opening the eyes of Japanese architects to the possibilities of their own traditions. Raymond apprentices, including Junzo Yoshimura and Kunio Mayakawa, were at the center of Japan's mid-century building boom. Their direct influence impacted the next generation, like Pritzker winners Kenzo Tange and Aratai Sozaki, contributing to their global prominence. But of course, Japan had also embraced the cult of Corbu. Post-war architects pivoted toward more adaptable, easy to build European modernism, and Tokyo was soon overrun with concrete and steel. But fortunately, younger architects rediscovered the past. With the rise of Kenyo Kuma, Shigeru Ban, Tezuka Architects, and KDA, Japan's mastery of sustainable design has been revived. Using innovative construction techniques, they're producing work in natural materials on a more human scale that is beautifully integrated with the landscape. So we've come back full circle as today's architects re-embrace vernacular traditions that Frank Lloyd Wright celebrated, creating designs that nourish the soul and lift the spirit. Wright built a vital lasting bridge between Japan and the US and it now spans the world. 153 years after his birth, his legacy here is alive in the work of his apprentices and their successors, as well as in his remaining three designs. So if it's safe to do so, we hope you'll consider coming to visit Japan's Wright sites in 2021. Thank you.